Hey everyone, Ryan here, and I just wanted to pop in and say if you're enjoying the show, please, please leave us a comment and a rating on your favorite app or whatever app you listen to the show on. It doesn't have to be your favorite app. I just use an app. You can leave us a five-star rating and let everyone know why you enjoy the show on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Stitcher, you know, we're everywhere. So it would help us out and we'd really appreciate it. On today's show, Scott and I are going to talk a little bit about We ramble about movies, we talk about Harry Potter, this new podcast I'm doing that's Harry Potter related. We get into a bunch of different stuff. So once again, we are sponsored by Jesse James Comics. So go check out the new Jesse James Comics location at the northwest corner of Peoria and 51st Avenue by Sprouts in Glendale, Arizona. This new 8,000 square foot location has an expanded gaming area for Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Force of Will, and many other games. They have their well-known Dollar Treasure Room and over half a million items for sale on the floor, including new issues, back issues, and trades. You can check them out at jessejamescomics.com or on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks, Jesse. I hope you enjoy the episode, and as always, our intro is by the sexy Scotsman Gary Fitzgerald. So take it away, guys. Welcome to another episode of The Illustrious Gentleman, the place where comic book artists and top blokes Scott Garleski and Ryan Cody talk about life, work, comics and booze follow the show on twitter at tig underscore show and online at www.tigshow.com t-i-g-s-h-o-w dot com don't forget to let us know what you're drinking while you're listening to the show go on yourself big man Weird. So, still pick, still picking up weird stuff. Is it recording weird stuff, or just the mic is showing that it's picking it up? The mic is showing it. I can see it on on the screen. A... Yeah, I can see my my you know my green bar flexes even when I'm not talking. But then if I look at my blue line, it's flat. So, uh, yeah, I'm seeing stuff on my line. So weird. Everything's off. I turned everything off. Is it picking me up when I'm talking? Like if no. I blabble, oh, it's, uh, it's not picking up. It's not picking up anything through your headphones. No, it's not. All right. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Whatever. Whatever. We'll you're an editing out. wizard. You'll take care of it. Yeah, I could just mute, mute your feed when you're not speaking. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah, That's what I just, do last. Just week. mute it totally. <laughs> yeah, I could do that too. Okay, so uh, what are you what are you drinking today, Scott? Uh, well, I have got a bottle of uh. Sierra Nevada sidecar left. I was going to have that, but it was kind of a shitty morning. So I went with the Eagle Rare 10 year. Ooh, trying to perk yourself up. Something like that. Yeah. Did you, so you were trying to decide how to get back to traditional inks this morning? Is that what you were trying to figure out? Whether it was worth it, whether it's something you wanted to do? Yeah, it's a puzzle that I can't figure out. And it's, it's really, really bumming me out. So, yeah, I I don't have a process. Like, I I would like to have a process. I, I want to have something I can rely on in times of, you know, frustration and uh, cluelessness to be able to say, oh, well, you know, first I do this and then I do this. I, I want to, uh, uh, you know, step-by-step how-to Right, so when all else fails, you can trust something in the Something I process. can hold on to. Yeah, I could see that. I've, I don't know if I've ever, from project to project, I don't know if I've ever done anything the same two ways. I think I'm still trying to figure it out, too. Anyways, that's not what we're here to talk about today, is your... Yeah, what are we here to talk about? Your your, your anxiety. Uh, I think we're going to talk about... I think we're going to talk about this, a little bit about this new podcast I'm doing, but uh, I also want to talk about Acme, so... Maybe we'll jump into that after. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah so after we, that. after we do the drinks thing. So you're drinking Eagle, what Eagle what Eagle Rare Ten Year from Buffalo Trace. Oh, okay. So it's just a ten year aged whiskey from Buff or bourbon from Buffalo bourbon. Trace. Yeah. All right. Okay. Have you had any yet, or is this the first? I I opened glass? it on Saturday. Oh, okay. And it's good. Um, you want me to tell you? Or you want me to save it for the end of the show? Now you can save it for the end of the show, I suppose. 
All right, but Buffalo Trace is a brand that you already like no matter what, so you knew going I, into this. I, yeah, well, I've like only it. had their their flagship uh, bottle, the Buffalo Trace proper. I, I haven't had anything else they produce. You know, uh, uh, Pappy they produce. Uh, um, Jesus, everything. There's a bunch of stuff. They're the most highly awarded uh, bourbon distiller in the world. Okay. Yeah, and I like I like Buffalo Trace. There's a bar here that that's the that's their well their well bourbon is Buffalo Trace, so I like it. Yeah. All right, so I have <clears throat> I have two drinks just because the first drink I have I'm gonna is gonna go away in like three minutes because it's just a little small little cocktail. So a couple days ago, I saw a post of our buddy uh, Mitch Garads. Uh, Garrett's uh, posted uh, gin and tonic with cucumber in it. And apparently I'm an idiot. And a lot of people know that you could substitute cucumber for lime. And I've never done that before. And he said that he was using Hendrix gin. And he said that Hendrix gin is, is made with cucumber. It's infused with cucumber. Yeah. So, I was reading up a little bit on that last night. It's infused with rose and cucumber. Yeah. So I went to the liquor store the other day and... I don't, I don't fit the tax bracket to buy a big bottle of Hendrix gin, so I bought just the, one of the little one, one hitter quitter bottles, which was still like six dollars. So it's outrageous, like six dollars for one ounce of alcohol. But either way, I made myself a Hendrix gin and cucumber tonic, and I actually tried the the vodka. I tried the cucumber and vodka tonics last night, and it was absolutely delicious. So I'm really excited. I've been waiting to. I've had this sitting in front of me for like five minutes. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm so excited. Yeah. It's interesting because you can really taste the cucumber, which if you don't like cucumber, I suppose you wouldn't like cucumber in your cocktails. But No, I'd want to put Thousand Island in my glass. Yes. <laughs> so, so I also picked up a pint of Black Boss Porter, which is a Polish beer brewed in Poland. I don't have the bottle in front of me, so I don't have the, the who brews it, but it's imported from Poland. It's called Black Boss Porter. It's 9.4%. And the thing that really attracted me to it was it was cheap. It's a it's a full pint and it's it was uh 350 for the bottle, so I'm going to break into that here in about five, 10 minutes. And one guy on Beer Advocate didn't like it. Soul Growl on Beer Advocate did not like this beer. It has a generally favorable reviews, but this guy didn't like it. And I'm going to read a little bit of what he wrote about it. This is Soul Growl on Beer Advocate. He wrote, this is just a brown dump truck full of sugar. That's what this is. Virtually no coffee, no dark chocolate, no roasty notes, nothing to provide any balance like a good porter should have. Beyond cloying, this is like drinking rum mixed with pure cane sugar, half a spoonful of Nescafe, and a splash of Pepsi. And uh, just based off his description, it makes me makes me want to drink it. So, so that's where I'm at today. My two drinks. Mm. Yeah, exciting stuff. Sounds exciting good. stuff. Yeah. And then uh, by the time when this episode comes out next week, we'll, it'll be uh, a couple of days before Acme kicks off, which is the Arizona Comic Mini Expo that's been going on. This will be the sixth year it's been going on at Samurai Comics in Mesa. And I'm excited about this year. We're bringing out some great guests. We have some good sponsors uh, besides Samurai Comics, who's also in the past has sponsored this show. There's uh, the NCT, National Comedy Theater Company in Phoenix. They're like an improv, like a whose line is it anyways type improv place. Huh. And they're in Mesa, and they've been a sponsor for several years. we got a Chiba Hut. They're going to feed us again. Um, yeah, Bonus Round, uh, Bonus Round Arcade Bar is where we're going to have our charity event. And then the Three Monkeys Print and Design did all of our printing work for us this year as they have as they did last year so uh it's really great that they they all help out so that that uh they they help me put this event on so we're bringing out um bringing out the revival guys the uh tim seeley and mike norton just wrapped up revival at image comics i think tim might write 
Nightwing right now, currently writing Nightwing, or he just finished writing Grayson and now he's writing Nightwing at DC. Uh, Mike Norton's done some work for Valiant lately, so uh, I'm excited to have those guys out. And Tim Seeley wrote your Lost Boys book that you just wrapped up yeah. for Vertigo a couple months ago. So, yeah, it's exciting to have those guys out. We're going to do, and then we're also, you know, we're going to have all the best other local guys. We're going to have you, Mitch, uh, Meredith so McLaren. Beards. Yeah, Meredith McLaren's going to be out there, uh, Val Hotchberg, uh, just a bunch of great people are going to be out there, so I'm excited. Not as beardy, and, those two. No, those two probably won't won't have the lumberjack beard. Like, Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have beard envy, because I think between Norton, Mitch, and you, I don't know if I even compete, so it's going to be embarrassing. You guys are going to look like full-on like outdoors woodsmen's up there. Um but yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're doing that uh, the drink and draw, the drink and draw social club is something we used to do in Phoenix every once in a while, and that was fun. So we're gonna tie that into the the charity drink and draw bonus round where we're gonna do sketches and give the money to uh, to Hero Initiative, which helps old comic book veterans who need the help and don't have the benefits and all that. And also the ACLU of Arizona because our president is a fucking monster, and so we need to try to help, try to help everyone's civil rights in a time of nonsense and nuclear winter. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that. And then the Saturday, May sixth, is Acme. We'll just be set up inside Samurai Comics, signing comics, sketching, shooting the shit. It's usually a pretty fun weekend, I think. At least it is for me. So I'm excited. Yeah, I look for forward it. to it. Yeah. Oh, that's tasty. Okay, so what else are we going to talk about today, Scott? Are we done? Should we just wrap it up right now at the 12 minute mark? All right, so long, everybody. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna pimp your new show. Okay. All right, we could do that. Would you like to explain to all of our dear listeners? Uh what this uh this brand new uh podcast is uh, is all about anyone who knows me or follows me knows that I'm a Harry Potter fan and I I feel a little weird about it because there's not a lot of vocal adult Harry Potter fans that aren't weirdos <laughs> so I so that was part of the thing was I was I was looking for a podcast to listen to 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 really get more in depth into like the world building and the characters and the story itself. And I found all the ones I found and downloaded, they were really like juvenile and very sort of fanboyish. And they, it was like a lot of puns and they would, you know, I don't know. They would just like talk about the spells and it it would just, it was just silly. It was silly and it seemed childish. And I got, what I gathered was these were people who read these books as children, as like eight year olds and grew up with them. And now they all have, you know, now they're doing podcasts and shit. So they're still, they remember these in a nostalgic way from when they were children. And I was looking for more of a storytelling adult based non, it's funny to say non geeky because it is geeky, but I I wanted to talk about it or, or hear a podcast about it. That was a, not overly geeky fanboyish and I couldn't really find any. So I just decided maybe I'll do one and maybe I'll try to get some people on there that I know who, who also want to talk about it. So, okay. So this is like a, a literary, liter, literary, literary, got it. Uh, analysis of uh, the Harry Potter books. Right. Yeah. So, and, but I'm not, I'm not a very good writer and I'm not extremely well-spoken. So it, it is it is more of just like a basic approach to it you know i don't know all the terms and all the tips and tricks but you know how does how does each how does each chapter advance the overall story how does each chapter help build the world how does each character help create the world that they live in uh so that's kind of i mean that's what i find interesting in almost all the things that i get that i'm you know remotely geeky about you know harry potter star wars Star Trek is I I like the environment and the worlds these characters exist in more than you know like 
you know, I would happily, I would happily read a book just set in the Wizarding World that had nothing to do with any of the characters, just because I like the rules that are set. I like the, I like the the mythos and the world building of it all. And so, we'll go chapter by chapter, and then try to try to break down, you know, how how the overall story is impacted by what's happening in that particular chapter, if that makes sense. Yeah. And and uh, it's called uh, My Patronus is a podcast, which is a a line for it's a line of a text I sent you similar to that. <laughs> I forgot I forgot the exact thing, but it had something to do with being drunk, or or a drunk person was my Patronus. So that's where I got the that's where I got the name for the podcast. And the uh, the first episode went up last week, and that was with you. And the second episode goes up tomorrow, and that's with Cena Grace, who's a writer Ooh. and artist who's done work at image comics and is writing the new Iceman comic for marvel so yeah so is he a, is he a potter guy yeah so when i texted him and said do you want to do it he said he would love to he said i, I love it and i i even he said i even read the eighth book which was the play and i read that book too so he he's read all the books and but he was also he i mean he He's younger than me, so he he got into those books when he was like, probably like twelve or thirteen when they started coming out. Whereas I was probably almost thirty, late twenties, almost thirty. And my uh, ex wife at the time would read them to my children at bedtime, and then I would hear bits and pieces. And then I think, you know, it become it become my turn to read it to the kids, and so I'd start reading chapters to the kids, and then I eventually just started. I went back and you know, grabbed the first one off the shelf and, and started reading them. So, uh, yeah, I liked it. I, you know, I'm like, a, I, you know, I was mildly, mildly obsessed with it. You know, I waited in line and bought the last book at midnight and I read it oh all. My God. Yeah. I went home and went home and sat on the couch and I read it all night. You know, I, I read it in like a 12 hour straight chunk or 15 hour straight chunk. And when the last of the movies came out, I think maybe Maybe the fifth movie through the eighth movie. I saw them all at midnight on the night they came out. So, but I mean, I don't have like a, I don't have like a robe or anything or like a wand or anything like that. But you know, I'm not. I mean, that's ridiculous. That sounds really cool. So, eh, eh, maybe. have you done the math? How many episodes are there going to be? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's other. Um, it's not unique. It's not unique to me to, to the breakdown of the episodes. There's a couple other podcasts that do that, that break them down chapter by one episode per chapter. Uh, and I think there's 199 chapters oh in God. the in the seven books. But some of these chapters, especially in the first two books, because I mean, I'm like I said, I'm a huge fan. But the first two books and the first two movies are kind of you know, I, I could take it or leave them. Um, well, not not necessarily the books, but the movies. But you know, they're not they're not as interesting to me as someone who's older. When I discovered the books, the first two books are kind of very young adult, juvenile books. So, for, you know, we're gonna like Cena and I did two chapters. So it's not I'm not gonna have just one episode for each chapter because ah. some of these chapters some some of these chapters are only like 15 pages long and maybe not a lot will happen. So. Still, yeah, you got so, what? There's three and a half years worth of a weekly podcast. Well, yeah, I mean, if it if it goes, I have a feeling. I there's a lot of people who, so a lot of people are that I've emailed are interested in doing it, but there's also like homework involved. You know, they have to read the chapters or listen to the audiobooks of the chapters and you know jot down notes and stuff like that. So, right, yeah, I I think it's going to be a lot of people are are interested, but then trying to lock down a date and all that stuff. You know, they, assign them homework and yeah. then lock in a time to record is going to be trouble. So my my, I originally was like, yeah, guest every episode, and then I could have returning guests. You know, so if if I had thirty people in my rotation, well, I think I think the biggest book has like thirty seven chapters. So if I had thirty seven people in my rotation, I could ask the same guest back once every book. But I think it's going to end up there might be there might be chapters you know, or episodes that are just going to be me just because there's nobody there or there's no one to line up or, you know, that it just, it, it's going to be hard to get a guest every week. So people and can't so, do what I do on this show and just come in unprepared and fly by the seat of my pants. Uh, I mean, they could, 
that's fine. But yeah, they can't. They need to have an understanding of the specific chapter. So I guess I guess they couldn't unless they, you know, have like a photographic memory or something. I suppose they could. But yeah, so so like I said, the two we've done two episodes, recorded two episodes so far, and a second one comes out tomorrow. And I want to try to keep it weekly. So that's another thing is I didn't I didn't wait to have a big buffer lined up. So you know. If it gets to Monday of next week and I don't have anyone for the third episode, I'll just do it myself and then we'll see how, how awkward and, and short that is. But, you know, they're, we're, we're, they're clocking in at like 22 minutes, 23 minutes, which I think is good. Um, you know, it's a lot. It, it doesn't take nearly as much time to, to edit and stuff as a longer podcast. So it's, uh, it's going to be fun. And I think, I think I just need to own it. You know, I think I need to, like, I'm thinking... Like, oh, it's kind of awkward. It's kind of silly to be talking about it and stuff like that because I'm a 41-year-old man and all this shit. But then I also work in comic books and there's plenty of 41-year-old men who have no problem with, like, a dude flying around in his underwear. So, you know, why should I feel, you know, weird about this book series of magic and shit like that? So uh, I think as I get more comfortable with it, it'll be good. And I think it is good. So... You can do whatever. I mean, you already draw comics. You can be as as nerdy yeah. as you want. You might as well go all the way. Yeah, it gets up. Well, like my my, I don't know. Like my uh, my nerdiness is more like subtle. Like so, I don't want to wear. I don't want to wear like a hair like a like a Warner Brothers approved Harry Potter shirt that anyone can get it. Like you know, universal or anything like that. But I would totally rock like a leaky cauldron shirt that was just like advertising a, a fictitious business that occurs in, in the books. You wouldn't wear a Quidditch jersey? I would not wear a Quidditch jersey, but I would wear like a uh I would wear a well, I wouldn't wear a jersey, but I would wear a t shirt for like a Quidditch team that's in the book series. You know, where if someone saw me wearing it and they're really knowledgeable about the movies or books, they'd get it. But I don't need to wear like the T shirt with the you know, with the movie poster on it or, you know, shit like that. You're not going to get a forehead tattoo? No, I might get a, I might, I might, I might go the traditional Harry Potter geek route and get a Deathly Hallows tattoo at some point, but that's pretty, I think that's another thing that's like pretty common. Like where I live, like three or four of my neighbors have Deathly Hallows stickers on their cars. Yeah, I see a lot of those. Yeah, so there are, I mean, I think it's just... I mean, I think it's just math now, you know, kids, when the books came out, if kids were eight, that means they were born in like 1990, which means they have kids of their own now. And so they're driving around in minivans with fucking Harry Potter stickers on them. So I don't know. I just, like I said, I love, I love the idea of, I love the rules that are created, the, the, the universe. And it is kind of like, I don't know. It's it's like she created her own entire universe, similar to like a comic book universe or a, the Star Wars universe or Star Trek. So that's. I don't know. That's that's what I like about it. I'm not like, I'm not obsessed with the minutia and and the emotions of the characters. I I, I enjoy the world building and and stuff like that. So Ooh. yeah, yeah. You don't you don't have anything that you geek out like that. I mean, is there anything that you get excited about media wise? I'm I'm fans of things. I mean, I have Star Wars T-shirts and stuff, but I I don't watch the ten thousand trailer reaction videos for Last Jedi or anything. I don't, I don't watch the movies all the time. Or, but do you, how many times have you watched the Last Jedi trailer? Um, like a half time, just over my oldest son's shoulder the day it premiered. Oh, yeah? So I, I oh. haven't really listened to it. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a trailer. Who cares? Do you? So like when Rogue One came out, and when um, was it Episode Seven? Yeah, Force Awakens. When Force Awakens and Rogue One came out, I took my kids. The very first showing, so it used they used to be midnight showings, but now you can see them at seven p.m. the night before. Yeah. So I took my kid, I took my kids to the very first showings both nights. You don't do that. You don't take your kids to, uh, to the se- seven p.m. The only p. M. midnight show I ever went to was I think we went to Matrix Reloaded. That's the only one I've ever done. Was that the third one? That way. That was the second one? Oh. I oh, think yeah, it okay. was that one. I, I don't remember, though. Yeah, the thing I remember about Matrix Reloaded was cool was the motorcycle chase. The highway chase scene was really good in that movie. I remember thinking that was cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, he sliced through like a like a suburban with a samurai sword or some shit. That was cool. But uh, yeah, no, I'm I've gotten to the point where like I get excited about. Uh, I don't know. Like I want to watch things that are that are that are I don't know fun and exciting. So I'll go to midnight openings all the time. But I guess my kids are also older. I can just do whatever I want, pretty much. Yeah. I I don't have to worry about the time constraints. Every time like, I get excited about something, I always get bit in the ass. I remember, yeah, that ha- yeah, I, that yeah. I, that happens. I remember. I had never been more excited for a movie than I was for Man of Steel. Oh my god! <laughs> Why? Because it was new Superman. It was Superman with, you know whatever it was at the time 2013 special effects 2012 whatever yeah well that's that's on you it was supposed to be good <laughs> yeah that's uh, and then uh I... and then jurassic world i was super excited for okay these are all these are all sound like decision making problems on your part i don't uh, think i, I mean, saw you you know there, there's no disappointment when you don't have expectations yeah, I mean, I used to. It used to always be the case. I can't really think of them. The, I can't really think of a specific one, but I used to always get really excited, and then I'd be bummed out. But uh, lately, I think I'm on a pretty good, pretty good run of movies that I've been excited about that I haven't disappointed. I'm trying to think of anything recently. I mean, everything the last like year or so has really held up, as far as you know, at least meet my expectations. Nothing really exceeds my expectations. Nothing since Fury Road has really like blown me away, but Rogue One has met your expectations. <laughs> uh yeah, Rogue One did meet my expectations because I didn't really know what to expect. And like I said, I looking back now, even though we did the show on it, looking back now, I think I appreciate it more now because it is a movie set in the other world. And I think it's still its problems was relying too much on the overall story. I think it if it if it distanced itself more, it could have been a better film. But I think that's going to age better than like Force Awakens for me, or uh, even like my kid the other day put in Guardians of the Galaxy, which I loved. I saw it like twice in the movie theater, and we have it on Blu-ray, and I've seen it plenty of times. And he watched it the other night, and I was watching it while I was working, and I was like, "Wow, oh, this movie's not." I mean, it. it it's not aging as well for me as I thought it was when I first saw it, like the first two or three times. So I only saw that once. I think we rented it at home at some point, and I didn't understand what the big deal was. Yeah, like I'm not excited. It didn't get me excited for the next one. I mean, I'll probably go see it, but no, there's nothing. I mean, short of like the Star Wars movie coming out at the end of the year, I don't know if there's anything that I'm going to go see at midnight. You know, this year, although I'm oddly intrigued by the new Aliens movie, which is just like a remake of it just seems like a remake of a mashup of the first two Aliens movies. But it does. There's got to be some twist. There's got to be something. I mean, Ridley Scott's not a hack. He's not an idiot. Yeah, I know. I think I think it's a way to soft reboot the franchise without having to call it a reboot or anything. And I don't know. I just like I, I don't know. I like those movies, and I like I like the the cast for this movie. I like the idea of them being on sort of like a uh, you know a mission to establish a colony. So you're gonna have like already built in relationships. I don't know. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be good. I I listened to this podcast today. I won't name it, but I I came across a podcast, so I downloaded an episode, and it's a a podcast where like these two friends. So one of one of them has seen a movie and one of them hasn't, and so they they talk for a few minutes about the movie, and then they take you know they they do their ad or whatever, and then they come back and they had rewatched the movie, and then they break down the movie. And today, the one I listened to today was Aliens, and they were I mean they it was just annoying. It's it's like that geeky fanboy podcast shit that i hate i hate it in comics i hate it and i don't like it in any sort of podcast i listen to but at one point they said uh i think they said something like oh are you so over ridley scott like i am and the other guy's like tell me about it and i'm like that's like i'll never listen to that podcast again because i mean what the fuck are they talking about 
Yeah. No, so dude's a super to, competent to, filmmaker. Exactly. Like you might not like what he's doing and you might think he's mailing it in or, or retreading the story, but it's going to look pretty and it's going to be competent. And I mean, they were bagging on Prometheus, which I enjoy Prometheus. I don't, it gets a lot of hate, but I thought it was fine. I don't know what people were expecting, but yeah, I mean, just, I don't know. I don't need to listen to two dudes talk about being over, you know, a guy who's made some of the best movies or the best genre movies of the last like 50 years. Yeah, so that's my that's that that boils down my hate of those type of podcasts that are like I don't know, review heavy podcasts where they bitch about shit even though we've done a couple of those I think it's different. You know, I think I think you can not like something and it still could be great. Whereas I think a lot of people who do reviews or or think that their opinion matters they think if if what they're watching or what they're reading is no good, then it's not a good product, which that they're not mutually exclusive. You know, there's lots of great shit out there that I don't like. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a uh, a certain uh, not a trendiness, but it's a uh, you know, it's chic to hate on shit, and I hate shit just because I hate it, not because I think my opinion is popular or funny i just don't like anything yeah you do you are hard to please i think more than more than most people but yeah i think i think there is a a thing where it's cool to shit on popular things because the mind the vocal minority could be out there and then you you feel you feel cool because everyone else likes something and you think it's shit and you think you're better than they are because you don't like it but it's i don't know I mean, I guess maybe because we work we work in the creative field that we understand how much work goes into everything. So just to blatantly say like, oh, I don't like it, so it must be shit is you're pissing on thousands of hours of work. Oh, sure, yeah. You know? I think having um, that sort of background in doing what we do for a living, I feel bad when things are shitty. Like I, right. nobody yeah. wants anything to be bad. You know, the, nobody, when they started, you know, drawing production sketches and putting a screw up together for, you know, alien versus predator, nobody expected it to be terrible. You know, all these people tried. It's just what they do wasn't very good. Yeah. They're giving it, they're giving it a hundred percent. It's just that they're, it's just not there. Yeah, maybe it's just not for you, you know, personally. Nobody, or... Not everybody can be Ridley Scott or, you know, Darwin Cook. Right. There are, yeah. There, there are good directors and bad directors and good artists and bad artists. I mean, they're all artists, though, that uh, you know are where they are because, you know, either, well, not either. It can be both things, but you know, they're really talented, you know, and or they work really hard. Right, and I think you can. I think a lot of things you can you can nail down to um, what what goes wrong in the creative process is our decisions made by non creative people, right? So, if a big comic book crossover event falls flat and feels feels like it's not natural, it's probably because editorial had so much that they had to do for you know product tie ins or certain things they wanted to feature that the, the writer who could be very talented, you know, could be hamstrung by these rules they have to adhere to, or, you know, movie studios, you know, just the, 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 the right creative decision isn't always the decision that's made because there's so many other factors that go into creating a popular product. Sure. So it's, it's unfair to blame a writer or director because a movie sucked. Like I'm sure like I'm sure that Batman versus Superman movie at some point was going to be a good movie. And then I'm sure non-creative people who have power made decisions that that didn't make sense that then the creative people have to deal with. I don't know. I mean, I'm not one of these guys who loves or hates Zack sure. Snyder. Sure. No, that, I mean, yeah, when you when you're talking about movies, I mean, the things that are costing tens or hundreds of millions of dollars to produce you know the i i would imagine the more money involved the more cooks so yeah yeah and so even if you have a talented voice at the helm somebody like a ridley scott he's not making this by himself he's not making it with his money and his cameras and oh right yeah the the people behind those things are going to have input too 
yeah, he doesn't own the property and get to make exactly what he wants. It's, you know, exactly. Which is, which is what's, I mean, again, going back to what we do for a living, that's what makes it kind of, that's what makes it, that's what induces anxiety in me is when I'm doing something that a lot of the work I'm doing is just me or a writer and, and there's not a lot of over, you know, oversight telling me what to do or what not to do. So then if it turns out shitty, then you can only blame me. So I, I wish I was working on like a, a licensed corporate comic. So, you know, when, when it's shit, I can, I can shuffle the blame sideways, which I'm not able to do anymore currently. So, you know, I always like to put the blame on somebody else whenever possible. It's a trait of mine. That's why you have so many kids. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so th- I'm uh, drinking this uh, Black Boss Porter now, and it's from Witnicka, Poland, which I've never heard of before. But you ever been to Witnicka, Poland? Twice a year. <laughs> Twice a year. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, I guess we've rambled on pretty much about, about not much. So this was the show about the new podcast. Yeah, so I'm sure we sold it really well. I'm sure people are all going to jump over and listen to it. But oh, fuck balls! That hey, I want to apologize to everybody. Um, the reason I'm having the sound problems that I mentioned when we started recording is because I didn't plug in my fucking mic. Oh, you record? You're recording on your laptop mic? Uh huh. I'm sure oh. this sounds a lot better now. So let's take it from the top. But yeah, yeah. Let's just start over. We got nothing else to do all day. It's all right. I'll fix it in editing, and then Jeez. again, I'm I'm everyone should episode know then. Thirty one. Yeah, everyone episode is going to know then that uh, it's not my fault. It's Scott's fault. See? Yeah, there you are, passing the buck again. That's right. So, uh, so I mean, that's yeah. So Jesus I'll edit all Christ. these. I'll edit all these yeahs out. This is terrible. Oh. But yeah, people. I I hope get you know, It's okay, Scott. We all make mistakes. I mean. It's probably pretty common that the most important piece of equipment you're using, it's probably pretty important that it is plugged in, but if it's not, that's okay. No, see, well, I've only got the one jack on my laptop, so I was doing my level testing before we started recording, and in order to hear the playback, I have to unplug my mic. Oh, yeah, yeah, my laptop's like so that, too. So I am passing the buck to HP. Well, I think it comes with buying a, a budget-priced laptop, because my laptop's the same way. Uh, I like a uh, uh, my old laptop had no problem having a mic and speakers plugged into it. So, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, it's here. Yeah. So, all right. So as we as we get ready to wrap it up, let's just um, I, I want to replug Acme. So anyone that's listening in Arizona, or shit, anyone that's listening anywhere in the world that wants to get on a plane, uh, Friday May fifth and Saturday May sixth is going to be uh, several comic book events going on in Phoenix in in association with Free Comic Book Day weekend. And like I said, we're going to be doing sketches for charity. We're going to be drinking. We're going to be hanging out at Bonus Round. Um, You know, uh, artists are are going to get some free drinks, Scott. So come on Mm -hmm. out and get some free drinks. And uh, it's going to be fun. And and that'll be fun. And then the podcast that I do is fun. I, I enjoy, I don't know if I enjoy recording podcasts I as much because I'm always stressed over what I sound like and, and what stupid remarks I'm saying. But when I edit the podcasts, I always enjoy them and they're always fun. So hmm. it's, Yeah, uh, I guess that's like I had made a list of questions to ask you about podcasting. But why? I, well, you didn't. You didn't do any of that. No. Well, instead, I only had three. Instead, instead, I mumbled about nonsense. Why don't you? Whatever don't you, you were saying was better than whatever this was going to be. Well, I don't know. Why, why no, don't shoot, I was just going to ask you, way. like, on average, how long does it take you to edit the show? So the way I edit is so the way we do our show together. We don't have to get into that, but I, I basically get the two audio files. I, I, I stack them and then. It usually, I've gotten it down now probably to about, takes me about twice as long to edit it as it did, as however long the recording was. So if we record for an hour, it takes me about two hours to edit. But most of that is having a slow computer. So a lot of times when I'm, when I'm making cuts and stuff, it's not instant, instant, sorry, it's not instant. So I have to wait for the computer to catch up. So 
if I'm cutting out a third of a second of something, which is one of us saying, um, or, you know, a cough or a, or a bottle clink or something like that, cutting out that one third of a second might take 15 to 20 seconds because my computer's fucking slow. If I, if I had a better computer and everything rendered immediately, I could edit the podcast in, you know, it it would only take me like 10 minutes longer than the actual recording to edit. The Harry Potter podcast takes me about, about probably about 45 minutes to an hour to edit. And then this one takes me usually twice as long as it is. And I've given some thought to leaving, you know, cause I also, I also cut out a lot of the pauses. Like when we stop to think about what we're going to say, there might be two or three seconds of silence and I'll, I'll trim that out. But I've, I've left some thought into leaving that in because it might make the conversation seem more natural. No, but, I appreciate you cutting that out. Yeah. Well, you're the worst at it. Like sometimes, I am. I'm terrible. S- sometimes you'll have a pregnant pause for like five seconds, and, and I'm not sure because we don't, we're not watching each other. That's another reason if we could get a video component set up, I could see when you're thinking or when you're done talking because a lot of times I don't know if I should jump in or if you're just if, – if the gears are cranking in your brain, so – uh, but yeah, so that's what, I mean, the edits are almost always, I don't really edit out much content. I edit out ums, ahs, so's, and pauses. That's pretty much all I cut out. Uh, well, my other question or one of the other questions was, isn't one show enough? But if you like doing them, then I guess you want more of what you like. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing is, I don't know, like you mentioned a couple of weeks ago on the show we were talking about it and we we're saying like, yeah, we could probably do this podcast for a long time. Like, I don't know if, how long, I don't know if in, you know, I don't know if in a couple of years we're still doing a weekly podcast, depending on schedule, but this, I don't know if I'm going to get through all seven books on this Harry Potter podcast. Like anything else, I could just lose interest in it. And when you're not making money off something and you're doing it as a hobby, it's easy to sort of lose interest in stuff and just move on. So for now, it's fun, but if it becomes more work than it than it needs to be, then I'll just I just won't do it. I suppose it's you know uh, I'm to, already uh, to I, condense it to a, a book for episode yeah yeah or something because I'm already having like you know I'm already having the the thoughts of like oh maybe this isn't interesting to anybody but me so what's the point like you can't. You can't have a bottle, bubble of one and do everything you want. I mean, I guess you could, but then that's that's a bizarre way to live your life. So, yeah, once I, you know, once I feel like I'm not getting anything out of it, that's an easy one to kind of put on hiatus or something if I need to, just because it is the secondary. It is the secondary focus. You know, this is the one I do with you is fun because you know I get to talk to somebody once a week who's not my kids or my wife you 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 literally are the only person i'm not related to that i speak to on a weekly basis yeah likewise yeah, yeah. i so, i do self checkout at the store so i don't have to talk to anybody there right well i don't do that i just don't talk to them i keep my headphones in like an asshole and i don't even make eye contact like when i go to a restaurant i don't even know what my waiter looks like cuz i don't look up and talk directly <laughs> to my waiter I order as I look at the menu and just hand them my menu. I'm like the biggest asshole. And it always comes back to bite me because when I need something, I don't know which waiter to flag down because I didn't pay attention to who my waiter was. So, you know, I'm I'm that asshole. But, oh, something else I wanted to mention. So, yeah, next Speaking week. Speaking of assholes. The, yeah, so besides, uh, besides just the Acme stuff next week, and I'm also recording a podcast with another guy. He's having me out as a guest. Uh, Eric Peterson, who I did the Jesus Christ comic with, the uh-huh. name of the, the time traveling Jesus killing people comic uh-huh. with. Yeah, he does. He does like an interview based podcast where we drink whiskey and smoke cigars. Although uh-huh. I won't be smoking, any, I won't be smoking any cigars. And he has like a video element to it where I think he does like a Facebook live stream while we record it. Yeah. So I'm doing that next oh. f- next Thursday. Uh huh. And then. Uh, I feel like you're just saying, uh-huh. What? You, what? Uh, and then next Friday morning, we're supposed to do a recording, an in-person recording. Hopefully, you can make it out. But yeah, we're going to be at, uh, we're supposed to be at Santan Brewery in, Ooh. in is it Chandler or Gilbert? Where's where's that at? Uh, I believe it's in Chandler. Okay, yeah. 
So that's the plan, at least for now, unless anything changes. So episode 30. This yeah. Is, this, this is 31. This is so 31. Episode, 30, episode 32 should be a live show with me, you, and uh, Mike Malvey from Santan Brewery, and maybe another comic creator guest, and we'll... We'll taste some Santan beers and we'll shoot the shit for an hour or so. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. As long as we're talking about uh, other podcasts, I guess. This past weekend, I was a guest on the Zang This podcast, uh, just talking about stuff. So, uh, you know, go on over and check out uh, Zang This, Z E N G, this. It's just a, Is it a... a general pop culture show, comics and movies and, and, Star Wars and all all of all of the all of the stuff that you like they talk about. So was it a um was it a were you like a panel so you were just chiming in with what they were already talking about or was it an interview of you? No, it was an interview. Oh, okay. So hopefully I got the job. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so talking talking Superman pretty much and talking maybe yeah, Copperhead, some, some Superman, vertigo stuff, Copperhead, yeah. Um, you know, my past. Your shady, shady past. The streets of Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's good. We'll cut this down in like a twenty minute episode. Chop the shit out of it. Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else going on? No. Other not than, really. Other than your your current frustration over just, work. Yeah, just I need I need to sit down and I think I really need have an understanding of what it is that i want and how to get it and then right well, figure let me, out the best path that way let me ask a question then so and and i'm only asking this this is just based off how i how i would approach this problem or or why this problem would come up to me so are you interested in is it is it original art sales that you're interested in getting back into, or are you interested in just the the traditional work, like inking with the brush and and is it well, the is it the craft that's making you pause here? Even or though I've the... I've been working exclusively digitally for the last fourteen months, uh, my favorite thing in the world is still ruling panel borders with a straight edge and a nib. So oh if I could you incorporate are... that back into my process somehow and and not set aside the $2,500 or whatever it is that I invested in in digital hardware while also mitigating the anxiety that comes with traditional art, there, there are a lot of prerequisites for what I want. Yeah, I think you're also borderline psychopathic because – you miss and you get joy in something i think 99 percent of comic book artists hate like i'll i'll the page no, i did I, today I, I would i would differ with you i bet i bet it's a lot of the uh of the best part for a lot of folks how was your uh how was your eagle rare 10 year <sighs> buffalo trace um it, it's it's heaven in a bottle is it it's it's the best thing i've ever put in my mouth so is it smooth? Like that's my that's my problem with cheap. I mostly drink cheap cheap whiskey and cheap bourbon. Is it is it rich and smooth? It or is without... the smoothest, uh, uh, sweetest, easiest drinking whiskey I've ever had. It is. It's it's unbelievable. All right. Well, so uh, so you're gonna give it a, a five? Oh, five, that's a, uh, it's a hard five. Hard five illustrious five illustrious gentlemen glasses for the Eagle Rare ten year from Buffalo Trace. All right, maybe I'll see if if I can get a one hitter quitter of that somewhere. I doubt they. I don't sell think it. they exist. Probably not. But uh, all right, the next time we're in the same place that's not somewhere where you already have to buy alcohol, I'll bring it. All right, maybe maybe next Friday I'll just pick you up oh, for the maybe. for the recording, and then I'll just. I'll have a drink at 9 a.m. <laughs> I'll drink. I'll try it out. I'll try it out for breakfast. So, all right. So that yeah. And then um, so the new experiment with the cucumber and tonic drinks is delicious. I'm surprised 
I can't believe that I never knew about this and I don't know how common it is, but you know, I traditionally vodka tonics and gin and tonics I've thrown lime in, but, uh, the cucumber is the new way to go. It's my new favorite. I love it. It's so refreshing. I mean, I had the vodka tonics last night and it was like drinking ice water, cucumber flavored ice water. I loved it. And the, the Hendrix and tonic was great. I don't know how important it is to have Hendrix gin with it. And I have some bottom shelf gin in, in the in the house, so I'll be able to I'll be able to follow up on that on whether it makes a big difference, whether it's Hendrix or not. But it was delicious and this black boss porter from Poland, I mean it's pretty good. It's nothing that I'm you know, it's nothing to write home about, but it's it's it tastes good. It's it's not like a light, you know. It's a heavier beer. It, you're getting some flavor profile, and it's relatively affordable. And it's super high. It's nine four nine point four percent content. So if you're only gonna have a couple beers and you like porters, I recommend this as well. So uh, if I'm gonna combine the two drinks today into one rating system, I'll give it a four. They're they're great. So uh, good good week for drinks for both of us. So, uh, back to, yeah, you could follow Scott at Scotty God on Twitter. You could follow me at Ryan Cody on Twitter. All the past episodes are available at tickshow.com. Tickshow.com also has a link where you can buy the guides around and you can, um, you can, you know, give us some money and tell us what to drink and whatever it is, we'll at least try it. Sure. Yeah. Why not? And if you enjoy the show or you're interested in becoming a sponsor for the show, you can drop us an email at tigshowpod at gmail.com. And again, everyone check out azcomicminiexpo.com if you live in Arizona and try to come out to one of the events this weekend. So I'll talk to you again in a, in a week or so, Scott. All right. All right. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe next week we'll have to make sure the mic's plugged in. Maybe I'll have to have you take a photo of your setup so I can examine it to make sure we're good to go. <laughs> Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, man. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye.